my, my mic is muted. I'm doing all sorts of craziness here. For some reason, I always do that. I always forget to hit the unmute. That's just one of them things. But hello, everybody. Everything's going great right here, right now. Uh, again, there we go. <laughs> that thing is on repeat. What's going on? We don't need to hear that again. But here's the thing. Jason, Sean, Alexander, Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, man. I I don't know what more you need than that. I mean, Jason, Sean, Alexander is going to be here. We're going to be talking about horror, horror movies, comics, all that sort of stuff. I mean, he's a huge fan of horror. And as kind of like a homage to him, you know, that's exactly why we're doing this uh, Inktober today. It's it's. I know he's a huge fan of The Crow, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're just going to be uh, inking The Crow. Already, It's over there on the table. I already roughly sketched it out so uh you know we'll get to that in a second but how's everyone doing today i'm i'm, I'm doing great everything's great everything sounds good uh, we've got a couple people we've got black star in the chat and verse films in the chat immediately she says everything sounds good which is great because last time and the sound was terrible so hopefully we're gonna fix that today we're gonna fix the whole uh uh sound sound was just terrible so Anyway, that's what we're going to get on. But before we get started, I just wanted to show you all something. Every year, fall comes. And for 23 years, I've been buying one particular book. Look at that. Spectrum. The new Spectrum came out. I was supposed to get this over a week ago, but for some reason, it was held up in Atlanta. I mean, why is it in Atlanta just sitting there for over a week? But anyway, the new Spectrum is out. I don't know if any of y'all check this out, but it is just fantastic. It's got all sorts of, you know, fantasy art, comic book work. I'm trying to hold that up there for y'all. And uh, it's just a really, really beautiful book. It's an annual, comes out every year this time of the year, uh, late October, early November. And I just, ugh. This thing is, I mean, look how big that is. That is just awesome. So the new Spectrum came out. I can't wait to check that out and uh, just see how everything's going on with it. You know, see all the new art and whatnot. And here's something. I think we're going to try to submit to it this year. We're going to try and submit some uh, skit stuff to it to see if we can get into the comic book sequential art section. That'd be really cool. Uh, we'll just see how that goes. Uh, we'll we'll talk about it and. uh Hopefully we'll get in for next year. How cool would that be? Maybe we'll submit, you know, like the Kent Williams cover or something like that, plus maybe a couple of my interiors. Still got a little while, a couple months until the submission thing is done with. But uh, I think it'd just be really cool to do it. So maybe we'll try and do that and see if we can get in there. So today I was wanting to do uh, The Crow, all right? Yeah, it is a huge book, isn't it? How much? Oh, it's like 30, $39.95. I've been buying these since issue four. So, you know, it's been 23 years I've been buying them. I'm missing two and three. And I think I got issue number one. So that's that's really cool. Play it again. I, I can't play it again, man. That, that's Well, I guess I could. Why not? Is that something that we want to do? Let me, uh, oh, 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 oh. Let me rewind this. I don't think that's it. <laughs> there we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
My mic is muted again. <laughs> anyway, so that's really awesome. We got Jason Sean Alexander on Thursday. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share something with you right quick before we get on this drawing. Just right quick. Just right quick. Boom. So there you go, man. We are going to be doing The Crow today. Uh, awesome movie. We watched it two or three days ago. And um, I got to tell you, it really stood up to time. You know, this movie is just timeless. And I think the reason why it's still timeless, not only was it just simple and to the point and there wasn't a lot of special effects, but they kind of grounded it in this dirty, like, like just alcohol, gun, sex, violence era where it's kind of universal and it goes on forever. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have computers. They didn't have any of those types of things, mainly because they weren't really around at that time. But they didn't have any of that stuff in it that kind of dates it, you know. So the movie wasn't really dated. It, it still felt fresh and nice and stuff. Hey, uh, Spawners, Image Comics, hey, thanks a lot for showing up, man. I appreciate you. I, I saw that you retweeted that and everything. Thanks a lot, man. That's really cool. Uh, we're going to get into the drawing in just a minute. But anyway, so the movie was still fresh and exciting and stuff. So I, I was just like, you know, we got Jason Sean Alexander coming on on Thursday. So what I figured is, I know he's a big fan of The Crow and uh, Dark City. And I was just like, okay, well, why don't I do a uh, Frank Tober? I'll do a The Crow today. And since we got Kent Williams, who did a cover for Skits, I figured, why not, you know, get some inspiration from Kent Williams covers just so, you know, y'all remember right here, you know, Kent Williams cover for Skits, the Sun Book one. And let's look at his crow covers. I mean, his crow covers are just fantastic. I love, love, love his crow covers. Uh, this is a real nice one. Uh, again, I mean, it's fantastic work. And take note to the way he does hands. I really like the way Kent does hands. Real emotional with his hands, you know. It's like getting, getting on in there, you know. These are just some really, really beautiful covers of his. And so for me doing my crow piece, I really wanted to take some inspiration from him. Um, I, you know, I, I looked at expression in the hands, you know, just uh, getting in there and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, his style, a lot of times when he was doing it, he didn't have a shirt on. It's just kind of bare chested. So I kind of took that type of approach to it, too but with the pants, the tape, uh, the big boots, that sort of thing. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to hop right into it. We're going to get into it. And, of course, um, Black Star is running the chat for me, so she's going to be answering questions and putting stuff up. I'll be able to look at it from time to time, but to be honest with you, it's a big one, so I kind of got to uh, really pay attention to the drawing. I'll try and talk a little bit while I'm doing it too. Hopefully we got the audio issues figured out. We did it beforehand and it looked like it's all, you know, it's all good. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, so we should be good here. Should be crystal clear with the audio. Hopefully everything worked out. I'm sure Karshina will be able to tell me. Black Star, you gonna tell me if the audio is sounding good so we can get on into this? Nice, 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 nice. All right. So I'm over at the art table. I got all sorts of stuff here. I uh, got my ink pen. I don't need an eraser. I uh, got my my standard usual stuff. Uh, you know, these right here, these pen tails. These are the creme de la creme. And uh, of course, I really like this thing. I don't know what it is. It's a Japanese pen. And it's got like a little felt tip to it. But that thing is fantastic. I really, really enjoy it. Let me just. Turn that up just a notch, okay. 
but that's one that one's really nice but and then of course i got some of the other ones that i've you've seen me use before that one uh i got the real the real thin one you know the prismacolor little guys uh i think that is it but we're going to start off a little differently today with this piece um i kind of want to just get real dirty with it immediately and then that way i can go back in and work it with uh whites and stuff uh also before we get started let me just show you this was a piece i just did of skits i just got done inking right here that's a lot of fun there's all sorts of fun stuff right there so how's that that's cool let me get it out of here so i don't splat on it and then also there's a page i'm working on right now let me get that a little closer for you so that's cool right there skits is eating a chicken leg some fried chicken he's getting into it look at that face <laughs> that is awesome so anyway that's what we're working on right now let me just take one quick look at the chat before we go Hey Ryan, Blaine, Blackstone, Blackstone. Sounds good to me. All right, so sound is good. We are ready to rock. I'm gonna plug the power in on this thing so we don't run out of power on the on the camera. There we go, Ryan. Ryan Wynn. Hey Ryan Wynn. We'll see you next week, Monday. We'll have him here Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That'll be cool. Looking forward to that. Thanks for stopping by. And again, I want to start this one off kind of dirty at first, and I'm going to get my hands just really nasty right out the bat here. So let me get my paintbrush. There's the bank. There's the one I want. All right. There we go. Let me dip it here into the inks. You know, sometimes it's good to work this way where you just get real dirty with it right out the bat. You know, that way you, you're not afraid to do what you want to it, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to splatter this thing around a bit. You know, kind of doing a Jason Sean Alexander type look there, the way he's gotten pretty popular with his stuff. That's what I'm going to do. kind of want this all to go in this direction towards those birds there but take note to the hands man the hands are real emotional and gnarled and stuff that's something that I really like about uh, Kent Williams work so that's uh, something that I'm really excited about doing something like that I mean you can can learn a lot from looking at other artists, you know, the way they do things and whatnot. Let me uh, clean off my finger here. I mean, look at this. You know, I started doing this Inktober, and uh, I came home my first night, and my finger looked like that. And my wife's like, what the heck happened to your hand? I'm like, well, that's from inking, baby. That's just how it goes. <laughs> She thought I got my hand into something. She was like, what are you doing to yourself? Well, I'm just doing art, baby. That's the way it is. When you do art, you get dirty. That's just the way it is. Let me clean off this uh, brush right quick before we get on over into some other stuff there. All right. And also, one thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use the blow dryer. Just wanted to start off a little dirty there to give me something 
uh, fun to get started on. And also I'm going to be starting off with some, some of this type of dry brushing as well. Remember this is the dry brush. Now. I can honestly say he's a dirty boy. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Blackstar. I appreciate that. And of course I have my piece of paper over here to the side that I'm always, you know, just that way I don't just throw something down that I don't know what's going to happen with it. So, so anyway, I'm going to go in here and get started with doing this a little dirty. One thing I love doing is boots. Boots can give you a lot of, a lot of emotion to your drawing. That's why Skits wear, well, Skits wears boots because that's the way he was in the dreams, but also just like uh, big floppy boots or they're cool to look at. They bring a lot of emotion to a piece. And this is just like shading with a pencil, really. It's like I'm just trying to get my shades in, you know, where I want, where I know there's going to be some shadowing a little bit. And of course, I can always go back into this and paint over it, which is something I'm definitely going to do real heavily because that's kind of Jason's. So I guess this one's kind of like a mix between Jason Sean Alexander and Kent Williams. That's kind of how I'm doing this. So that's cool. And I've decided that my light's just coming in from this way where the birds are. So you got the light coming in this other way. You got the birds coming in this way. And uh, that's where we're going to do it. That's the way we're going to do it. Yeah. And I know, you know, a lot of people do different styles for Inktober, you know, I mean, this is definitely not a traditional way of doing inking, you know, and to be honest, I mean, I don't, I don't really like traditional inking styles. It's just not my thing. I'm more into painterly ways of doing things, you know, I like getting dirty, slinging paint and stuff like that. So that's, Really what's going on here is just me slinging some paint that I'm slinging ink today. Yeah, here we go. But this should be really cool, I think, once it's done. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to get started in on the belt, this belt here. That's really where I'm gonna get started. Trying to make some marks. And it's because it's got repetition to it, so repetition always gives your your piece a little bit of relatability. Like it seems real when you put some repetition in them. It's just one of them things. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Is Putting in this belt, and the belt has these studs on it. This is something that Kent Williams liked to do with his crow pieces. He always had this big fat belt, you know, that the punkers used to wear in the 70s and 80s with the studs on it. And I think it's really cool. I had a buddy of mine in uh, college. He had one of these. He always wore it. Haven't seen him in a long time, though. I really liked him. Good friend of mine. But uh, I, I kind of lost track with them. You know, we we're both kind of the same. You know, we're, we got to college. Uh, I was kind of into, I was into goth and industrial, and he was into punk. But uh, we kind of had the same likes of things and stuff. And uh, he had this girlfriend, and his, girl, his girlfriend dumped him after he got to college. And the reason why his girlfriend dumped him was because he. Uh, he wouldn't smoke or drink or party, you know. He was kind of he was a straight edger, which a lot of the old punks were, you know. And uh, his girlfriend left him because he wasn't fun, supposedly. And then, like the second year he came back to college, he got all into drugs and drinking and smoking and everything. He got his girlfriend back, and I guess he was happy, but I don't know. It was kind of weird. Hey, whatever. You know, women make you do crazy things. <laughs> but 
you know, as long as he was happy, you know, but I don't know about all the drinking and drugs and stuff. It just seems kind of silly. But, hey, to each his own. He is a good friend, and I'll always, always be there for him if he ever needs me for anything. Good guy. Matter of fact, uh, his, his girlfriend, I met his girlfriend, his girlfriend's, uh, dad, and he, he drove up on his Harley. Like, he dropped her off at college with a Harley. And, uh, he was like, he told me, he goes, uh, you're not really a biker until you've killed someone for your bike. I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's some crazy stuff, man. That's hardcore. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't have a bike, and I don't think I'll be killing anybody for it. But, you know, That's cool, whatever. <laughs> so basically what I'm doing here is just a bunch of dry brushing, you know. And I got these, uh, this tape. You know, if you watch The Crow, the movie, I really like this about it, where he got that tape on uh, on his legs and arms and stuff like that. It's like some gaffer's tape or black uh, duct tape. And then also some, uh, also some uh, um, electrical tape on his hands. So we're going to do that as well. It's just a... Nice little aspect of it, you know. You know. So we're putting that in. And right now I'm using the edge of the brush of this ink brush here as if it was uh, the edge of a pencil. You know, just lightly putting the ink down this is uh you know dry brushing and techniques 101 here <laughs> but yeah this is this is definitely gonna be cool i've been looking forward to this for a few days because I, I sketched it out the other day and i had it in my mind before that so I was just like, yeah, this is going to be fun. I kind of wanted to do it. But I was like, well, I got to wait till the right day. You know, we got to do it live and all that. So I need content for y'all. You know, we got to make y'all excited about what's going on here. What we got here? Brian went. I wasn't really an inker until I killed someone for my ink. <laughs> Good one, Ryan. Exactly. Kind of got the uh, the window open because it's a little hot in here right now. So I don't know if y'all can hear the outside noises, but uh, one of the goats was just hollering. We've got goats here on the property, and uh, yeah, he's a uh, she probably is uh, all female goats here at the house. She's probably out there like hollering at me or something. She can hear me talking maybe. I don't know, <laughs> but I hear her out there, and it's funny because if you're around goats long enough, each goat has their own distinctive uh, bath, you know, they're called a bath, they go bath, but, um, and I can usually tell exactly which goat it is just by the sound, and that one, it sounded like it was imaging, but I could barely hear it, so I'm not completely sure. Let's see here. Any, any more postings up? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I, I was drawing earlier on skits, you know, working on a page, but, you know, inking and drawing are kind of different in my you know, at least with the way I do it. Some people just ink right over their pencil marks. And I'm just not one of those people. I, I like, I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of all over the place when it comes to inking. So, um, by me working on the pants right here, I'm actually just kind of getting my, my uh, arm up to speed as to the type of work I want to be doing here.
So that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm, you know, I've always been interested in how people ink. You know, that's something I'm going to ask Ryan Wynn about. We don't hear any bye. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to ask Ryan Wynn when we have him on the show, you know, about inking and stuff. Because I've always wondered why people just ink over their pencil marks. You know, that's something I just, I've never really understood too much. So that's something I definitely want to talk to him about. You know, why do people do that? It, it would seem to me like very repetitive and uncalled for, maybe. I don't know. I, I just figure if you're gonna if you're gonna ink it, just ink it. Don't pencil it out or anything. Just you know, do a rough pencil and then go right to inks. That's the way I would. I would think you'd want to do it, but I don't, you know, I ain't a professional inker, so, and Ryan is, so I'm going to be excited to talk to him. Now, supposedly, he used to do, like, bricks and chains and stuff on the Spawn comic. You know, he did background type stuff, and he says he's about worn out from chains and bricks and that sort of thing. <laughs> it sounds like kind of fun to me, I don't know, but yeah, I could see how it could get boring after a while. I'm definitely going to talk to him about that. And, of course, his books. Of course, we're going to talk about his books. So that should be fun. Now, I don't know what we got in store for Jason Sean Alexander. My uh, black star there in the chat, she's the one who's, who's putting all that together. She got that up and going. And she's putting together something special that has to do with horror talk. So... We'll see what that's about. But from my understanding, Jason was just like, man, I just I want to talk about normal stuff. I don't want to talk about art. And we were like, yeah, man. That was right up uh, Black Star's alley. She's just like, yeah, man, I want to talk horror. And he's like, heck yeah, let's do it. So that was cool. I'm looking forward to that. A lot of this is probably going to be in deep shadow right here. Might even be kind of blackened out. We'll, we'll see once we get into it a little more. But, oh, there we go. First Films Production. Thanks, boss. Oh, anyway. She had something up on there. I missed it. That's how it is, though. It's like, you know, sometimes this stuff just gets missed. That's why she's handling all that. Talk to her. She's got it. And, of course, I look up from time to time. See, I'm doing this from my phone. I basically just like called my phone in to the chat. That that's how I'm getting the two cameras going here. And uh, you know, when uh, I read up on uh, Brandon Lee when he got the role to play the crow, one of the things was he uh, had to lose a lot of weight. He lost like 40 pounds. To play the role and you know because that's kind of how the pro looks he's kind of real thin and gauntly and it's probably because he was living in a grave for a year before he came out <laughs> so there you go so that's the way i'm drawing him real thin and kind of you know Kind of like a zombie almost, like he's got a body of a zombie almost. That's kind of the way I'm thinking. And I guess I'm just going to do this whole thing with a brush. I'm just liking this brush, where it's going, what it's giving me. So it looks like, I don't know, maybe I'll be doing a lot of this with the brush. But I think it's going to turn out just fine. It's funny because like whenever I get into a piece, you know, initially I have an idea. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this and this. And then when you start making marks, it's like, yeah, maybe it's going to end up like this or that, you know, it kind of changes. 
and, and I think that's why I like I don't like just inking over pencils because it's like I want I want there to be some spontaneity to it I want there to be something exciting about it that I didn't know was gonna happen so that's definitely something that I like in a piece you know it's like I want to be surprised by what I end up doing and if you just if you just do regular stuff all the time, you know, just regular mark making with pencils and then right over the top of it, you know, you don't have any of that spontaneity. I'm very much interested in having some spontaneity in my piece, you know. It's got to have... Oh, I'm kind of down here at the bottom. Just notice. Get this up here. I'm kind of inking down here. Let me move it up. Let me see here. Colin Swinboom. I, I read the comic of The Crow and was shocked to see how different it was in tone to the film. Yeah, you know, that happens a lot. But I got to tell you, it's still... They, they did a really good job with it, you know, turning it into a movie. You know, I always say, like, The Crow was the first comic book movie where I said, where they made something from a comic and it didn't feel like it was from a comic, you know? And I, I thought that was a good thing because before that, we had, like, the Batman movies, the Superman movies, the Hulk TV show, the Spider-Man TV show, and it always felt like it was... They were trying to make it like a comic. It was like, oh, this is a comic. It's like, why can't you just make it like real life or something, you know? And so I, that's one thing that I really, really like about The Crow is it was like, hey, you can do this and not make it cheesy and silly, you know? And um, what's another thing that was kind of... You know, the new Batman movie, movies were Christian Bale. Like, the first one, it still felt like it was kind of comic booky, But the, uh, the second one, where they had the Joker and stuff, oh, man, that, I mean, it just felt real. It, it, it felt like real life, like you just stepped out and this is really, really happening. And that's what I really liked about it. You know, for the first time, it was like, wow, Batman's real. You know? And I kind of like that about it. Uh, and, you know, there's different it's different people like different things, you know. And that's fine. You know, some people like that, some people don't. But I, I really enjoyed it. And with The Crow, for me, it was like, wow, you can make a comic book into a movie that's not cheesy trying to be a comic book. You know, like old time, like Pat Bang Wham, like the old Batmans or something like that. You know, it's like, dude, this is this is cool. You know, it's really cool stuff. So, that's just my take on The Crow. I, I thought they did a really good job turning it into something palatable for everybody. And to this day, it's still one of my favorites. You know I mean? It's an awesome film. I was a big fan of Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee anyway, so... You know, when, when I first found out he was going to be doing The Crow, Brandon Lee, I was like, what? Well, you know, he, he'd done Rapid Fire. I think that was the last thing he'd done. And I was just kind of like, uh, okay. Kind of a weird pick. But then once, you know, started seeing the visuals and everything, I was like, whoa, man. It's, you know, it's kind of a shame because, you know, that movie could have really jump-started his career into something else, you know. But, uh Shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know, it ain't, it just never happened because he got killed on set. And it's sad, but, but he left us one heck of a movie, you know. They went back and finished it, and uh, I'm, I'm glad they did. Because it's one heck of a movie. I really, really enjoyed it. One thing that can happen when you're doing this dry brushing technique and you want to try and not fall into is it can, you can get too soft with it where there's things that are not really defined, but what you need to do is just kind of go back and define those shapes a little bit better. 
So that's something that you always got to look out for. You got to make sure that you you definitely go back and define certain areas and certain shapes and whatnot. So right now it's just everything's kind of soft with it, but we'll really go back and hit it and make sure that it's nice and detailed. And you hit those those really strong areas that you want. I think I'm gonna move up into the into the hands and head up here. And uh, yeah, keep going. One of the uh, things that you always gotta look out for is uh, uh, is don't worry too much about just doing stuff in one spot. You know, jump all over the page, you know, like when I'm working on a piece, I just dropped something, but, you know, when I'm working on a piece, I always try and just move all over the place. Like I'll see something over here and I'll work on that. If I see something over here, I'll work over there. Don't be afraid to move around. I, I was talking to, to old pal of mine, Jason Gonzo, and uh, he's got a really cool luchador comic out there. Go check out the, the show that we did with him. And um, he was telling me, like, he'll start at the top left corner of his page and just work all the way down. I'm like, wow, I, I don't know if I could actually do that, to be perfectly honest with you. But that's how he does it. And I was like, wow, good on you. Maybe, maybe I need to learn from him because the dude's got one heck of a graphic design eye and um, visual and uh, also his coloring is just bar none, some of the best I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, we met, we were both working at uh, McFarlane, you know, working for Todd McFarlane back in the 2007, 8, 9, 10, around those times. And uh, it was just good to catch up with him. I hadn't spoke to him in, in a good long time, you know, maybe eight years or something like that, I think it was. But he's, you know, got a cool comic. You need to go check that out. And uh, it, was, it was a good conversation, you know talked about food we talked about all sorts of stuff and as anyone who knows me knows I love talking about my foods man I'm a big fan of food and I think that's you know I've been okay I haven't had any problems with being overweight or anything like that but uh, lately I've kind of starting to put a couple of pounds on and I need to watch it you know but I love eating I'll eat anything you put in front of me me and my wife were talking about this the other day. It's like, man, you need to watch it. I was like, oh, gosh, I do, don't I? But I'm only a few pounds over. You know, not not too bad. Not too bad. I'm only about 20 pounds over what I was uh, when I was younger. High school, college, that time period. But, of course, back then... I didn't lift weights. Today I lift weights, so a lot of that has to do with lifting weights. You know, I exercise almost every day. It's really good to exercise. You need to exercise as much as you can. Don't go overboard, but definitely exercise the older you get. It's good for you. And again, I won't be real. Look at these gnarly fingers right here, you know, like knuckles kind of look like they're popping and stuff and that's the way I want to keep it I want it to have that that raw look you know it just gives emotion to it and I, I feel like I'm taking a lot more time and energy with this one than I have the other ones I've been doing these other Inktober pieces I've been doing the Scooby-Doo the Scooby Tobers, go check those out. But yeah, this is this is cool. There's that tape coming around the finger there. I'm gonna make sure I get that in there good and solid. But yeah, I'm definitely taking more time with this one. Maybe be just because I like the crow so much and I'm really excited about this one. 
I'm excited about them all, but you know, sometimes it's like you just need to kind of get into it and get in, you know, get it done. But this one, I'm like, eh, I might spend a little more time with it. Might go a little extra long today on this one. We'll see. Just want to give you all a little something extra. And the funny thing is, when I started drawing this, I, I definitely had Kent Williams Crow in mind. And I was like, man, I'm just going to, you know, I, I got his kind of shoulder blades into it the way he does it which is cool he's definitely got a way of doing hands and certain parts of the body that I, I just love so I'm definitely channeling him right now and I'm definitely gonna be going back in here with some whites and stuff so I can really make that body the body pop you know on this one And, but most likely with the whites, I'll probably have to go back in and do that after the show because I got to let this thing dry and I got to, before I can put the whites down, I got to, I got to seal it, you know, put a, um, a sealer on the, on the paper so the ink won't run when I go to do the whites. So, uh, you know, that takes a little while. I got to take it outside because it stinks and everything. So I'll probably have to have to do that after the show. Put all the whites into it. But this is cool right here with doing this tape. He's got the tape wrapped around his arms, like it kinda like in the movie. like that now Kent he was just doing it where he had nothing on his upper body when he was drawing him but I was like I wanted to add a little something to it so I decided to go ahead and add um, the, the tape on the hands and the uh, lower arms I thought that was a cool addition that they had in the movie you know, I, I like the look of that. It looked really cool. And it made a lot of sense because he was doing a lot of, you know, action stuff. And it, and it seemed like it would probably help you with all that. There we go. That's looking cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Again, thanks a lot, everybody, for being here in the chat, you know, saying, hey, um, been trying to keep my eye on it. Uh, Black Star is answering all your questions, though, of course. So if you got some questions, go ahead, ask her. Yeah, it's looking good, looking good. One bad thing about doing this from your phone, like I'm doing right now, is you can't, uh, because I have it plugged in for power, you know, because I don't want the, the phone to run out of power while I'm doing this. I can't really have headphones on and have anyone on and talk to them. So if, I, I need to figure out a different way of doing this if I ever want to have someone on and talk to them. nice soft edge I'm getting from this brush. I really like it. This looks really nice. Mm -mm. Maybe get something a little darker. I'm gonna work with this hair. Let's see what we got here. I uh, don't want that. Let me get this I'm getting this brush. It's the same as the one I've been using, but there's a lot more ink on the tip. So I need to be very careful with this one, how I use it. 
because it can get dark and big and fat real quick. So I just need to be kind of gentle. Of course, I'll go back into it and work the work it a little bit. I just want to kind of put some dark lines in there for the hair. So what's going on here is uh, he's kind of falling, you know. You got these crows here that are coming after him. <laughs> They're cool. And I think what I'm going to do for the face, for the face, I'm probably going to do some nice thin line stuff. And I'll get in there with a, with a Prismacolor marker or something like that and get a nice line in there because there's some really nice detail I want to get in the face. Uh, where's the where's my pen at? Did I drop that? I think I did. There you go. I got it right here. There we go. Now I'm gonna lean in a bit here. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the Get some nice little details in there. Look at there. Yeah, that's looking good. really get in there when, uh, when it comes time to get the paint because I, I want to really bring out that face because it looks so good. That's just kind of, there we go. Because his eyes are kind of darkened in a little bit. face paint yeah. yeah that's cool right. that's looking nice right there I'll have to Oh, there we go, Brian. Went. My boot hammerella has just 10 days left on IGG. We have awesome perks for an awesome cosmic superhero style book. All right. And again, we're going to have you on here Monday. Looking forward to that, Ryan. Let's see if I can hold this up and kind of show you the detail I'm getting on the face. So my eyes are looking pretty good. I want to kind of work some of this, these little lines in with the hair. I 
one thing you always got to look out for when you're doing your work is a good thick to thin line. You know, you need some thick lines, you need some thin lines. You know, it gives it a, I don't know, just makes it feel better, you know. Get them heavies and lights and stuff in there. Just looks a whole lot better in my opinion. His face is definitely going to look uh, a little ghostly, which is cool. Which is really cool in my opinion. Uh, let me work on this hand here. It's about run out of ink. Uh, let me do something drastic here. I'm gonna try and add a little ink to it. I don't know about this. Mm, yeah, that might help. Let's let's see what we got here. It helped a little bit. I just basically dipped this brush into my ink well just to get a little bit of ink back on it, freshen it up a little bit. Again, make sure you keep them fingers nice and gnarly. And again, this process when you're doing a dry brushing, basically what you're doing is you're building up. You know, you're starting from one spot and you're building up. And you start off light and you build up to your blacks. That's kind of the way that you want to do it. Like if I was a uh, working on an illustration, what I would do is um, I would um, start off with a mid-tone and I'd tone the whole page to a mid-tone and then I'd work my darks in and then I'd work from that mid-tone up with the lights and working lights back into it. That's basically the process that you do. Yeah, you know, it's there's all sorts of different ways you can do things, but that's just what I like to do. And it was a process, you know, that I learned in actually high school. Let's see if we can start getting some darks on this tape. I think I might just do the tape on this hand, just straight up dark. That way it makes like a really nice contrast. But still, I want it to have a, a painterly feel, you know. I don't want to go too far with it, but I, but I still want it to retain some soft qualities. Do that, and then I'll come back in with this. And then you can come in here and kind of soften it up. Utilize some of that extra ink that's on there. I almost feel like I should be using maybe like one of these felts instead of a brush for this, but that's all right. The good thing about doing this technique is if you mess up, you're going to go back in with lights anyway, and you can fix it. <laughs> so that's cool. Don't matter, you're going to go back in and you can fix it later. There we go. Okay. King Todd Comics, looking good, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. 
appreciate you, King Toe Comics. And I'm kind of thinking of where the light's coming from. I'm just, you know, playing around with that. And again, like I said, you'll you'll go back and you'll you'll hit those spots where you want you know a little oomph to it. See like that. That really makes that pop, that one little area there. All right, bam. Yeah, that hand's looking pretty good. <clears throat> and again, go out there and, you know, experiment. That's what I would say. Everyone should experiment with doing different ways when it comes to inking, drawing, whatever. You know, sometimes I'll buy books that, you know, maybe the art or the the draftsmanship ain't that great, but the techniques are really cool, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. Really good technique. And they just haven't quite got there yet with their with their draftsmanship. That's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. Again, you know, I started this thing pretty dirty, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. You know, because when I think of the crow, it's like in the back alleys and, you know, the streets and stuff. I want it to be kind of dirty and grimy. So, that's exactly how I'm doing it. Kind of dirty and grimy. What we got here? Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. I know. Hit that bell for notifications as well, you know. If you like this content, you know, we're doing all sorts of things on this channel. You know, most people just do one type of thing, one little type of show or something like that. You know, we try and try and mix it up a little. Do all sorts of stuff. You know, we're showing you art process. We're, we're doing... Um, interview shows uh, we review things I mean we got all sorts of stuff on this channel this is the only channel you really need actually <laughs> that ain't true but you know you can say that there we go Yeah, that's looking good. I think I need to go back into this hair and get a little darker on the hair. What I might do with the hair is uh, go back in with some uh, some whites here and there. But for now, I think I want to just kind of get it in there. This is uh, what's known as scumbling. They're just they're scumbling the brush, I guess is what it is. I, I can't remember the actual definition of the word scumble. But I'm basically just taking the bristles and beating it down on the, because it's so dry. I 
had some uh, teachers in college who were big fans of scumbling. That's all they did. <laughs> scumble, scumble, scumble. Alright, let's get back now. Let's get over on this other hand, finish that stuff up. Let me move this. Low battery. Oh, hold on a sec, guys. I need to plug this thing in. I didn't even plug it in. <laughs> All right. There we go. We should be still going and good. Oh, there's my pen. I dropped it on the floor. So I plugged the USB into the phone to power it, but I forgot to plug the USB thing into the wall. It's typical. So typical. I do that type of stuff sometimes. Should be good now. All plugged in, ready to go. Oh yeah, look at that. Looking good. Again, sometimes, man, I just got too many pins in my hand. I just keep loading them up. <laughs> kind of silly. Good. Do a little bit of this. I'm just gonna make this dark in this hand there. There we go. There we go. That's looking good. little bit more definition there. Let me, <coughs> excuse me. Let me get a drink of water right quick. I'm kind of getting dried out here. Put my pan down. Alright, got my water. Mm, that piece is looking badass. When you're done, just go ahead and slide that into my mailer. <laughs> All right, Rick. <clears throat> I'll definitely do that. It's coming your way. <laughs> That's cool. I like it when people like what, what we're working on. That's always good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm not used to talking all the time like we do when we do these shows like this. It's not something I'm used to. My wife's a lot better at this. She, she can talk it forever. She, she's good. She's way better at talking than I am.
awesome. What's everyone up to today? It's Tuesday. I'm going to guess that there's a lot of shows going on today. A lot of shows on the internet today. Sometimes all you need to do with a real wet brush is just kind of just squish it down right where you need it, you know. Like some of these spots here, I'm going to because it's kind of got them leather pants, you know. And there's all those little ruffles in the, in the leather pants. That look cool. Let me uh, get some scumbling going on underneath here. Might need to add some ink to this brush. I think it's starting to die on me. What was the quote from uh, the crow? I think we broke her. I think I broke my, my brush here. I need to add some ink to it. Let's just hope I don't put too much on it, which I did. Right. That's okay. There we go. Yeah. Bring that bad boy back to life. go there we go and sometimes it feels like you want to just resort into like Bob Ross mode or something like that it's like happy little shading here and there happy little shading <laughs> I'm doing happy little scumbling right now happy little scumbling And I know this is kind of a process, you know, it's like, it takes time to build this up and to really make it look good, but in the end, I always feel like it's worth it. Yes, I, I'm kind of doing this as if it were like a cover or something like that, you know, add a little, a little extra oomph to it. nothing more fun than finding new mark making and stuff which is kind of what I'm doing here with this it's looking good but I want to kind of get those lines in there you know it's just kind of coming around on it for sure Mm -hmm. All right. 
going on in the chat? Is there anything going on in the chat right now? And again, we'll go back and pull some of this stuff out with the white. But for right now, I'm just loving this. It's going good. I might have to put some more splatters and stuff in it too. I don't think it's got enough splatters. At least not for Jason, Sean Alexander. He's all about the splatters. Might have to do a little more for him. So the skits book is coming along great. It's uh, uh like I said, I, I got about half done. You know, I'm just trying to get all the pages done right now. No color, and uh, I'd like. I think we're gonna do. A, we're gonna release a bunch of pages on the campaign as an update. And that'll be cool. And. Uh, just kind of show people some some of the work, you know, so they know that stuff's still going on and we haven't done an update in a while. I tell you what, though, some of these new campaigns I've been on, they're doing updates like constantly. Right, what do y'all think? Do y'all like those updates where you you get them constantly? I don't know. I, I, if I'm getting updates all the time from a campaign, I tend to just delete them. It's like, I don't need to know every little thing. Just let me know when the book's done or if you got new artwork to show. Let me pull that up a little bit. I think I'm working down here where no one can see. Yeah, I'm working on that boot. <clears throat> so, yeah, what do y'all think? But we're definitely going to be doing an update here uh, either, you know, the next day, maybe tonight or something. I don't know. I have to see. See how Black Star is feeling. If she wants to put one up tonight or tomorrow or something. Seems like we've done a lot today. <laughs> Especially, you know, we're doing this and put some artwork out there on the on Twitter this morning. I'm putting up artwork on Twitter all the time, so go over there to Twitter and check that out. Also check out uh, Come Get Some's Twitter account. She's always posting new stuff and you know what's going on on Come Get Some. And uh, it's just really cool. You know, she's always got something going on over there. Also check her out, Karshina J. I'm sure she, you know, you can find all these in the descriptions down below. And uh, of course, check out this channel. Go to the Skits Comic uh, Twitter. Say hello to us over there. And um, <clears throat> let us know what you think. Uh, as always, you know. Leave us a, a note, you know, a comment down below. Say what you think of the channel. If there's anything you'd rather see instead of what we're doing. Anything's helpful. Anything's helpful. Alright, get back into the big bold brush here. So, 
as you know, skits. We're doing three different art styles and skits. Hopefully you know that. I mean, it's in the campaign. You know, that's something we're doing. You know, we're doing an ink style. This is very much, very close to the inking style that's going to be in the in skits. Also, uh, we got the penciled style, which is really cool. I really enjoy the penciled style. And then there's the digital style, which is the digital painting, which has been, you know, that's a lot of people like that sort of stuff. The funny thing is, is I can't do any of that stuff really until the, you know, I'm leaving that till closer to the end of the book. You know, when I, I want to get all the pencil and ink pages done first. Just so, um, you know, I feel like I got got that done. Because that's the big, biggie. And then we'll wind up going into some of the other stuff, you know. All that digital stuff that people like. So that'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to doing that stuff too. I really enjoy doing it. I'd like to do a whole book that way, but the only problem is I wouldn't have any artwork left over at the end, and I, I like physical artwork, you know. What do y'all think? Y'all y'all probably don't, do you care about that, if there's physical artwork left over? I mean, or do you just care about the end product and, you know, you don't really care about the art, you know, the physical art when it's done? What we got here, Ryan Wynn. I don't mind once a week updates if there is something to actually share that's new. Daily updates are too much. I know. I know, man. It's like, there's been a few that uh, I was just like, man, dude, yeah, I got you. I got you. I, I heard you last time when you said that, but I mean, if you're updating the campaign, you throw something new up there to sell, that's cool. You know, that sort of stuff, that's cool, but most of that, I just don't care for, you know. There's just too much, too much. I'll tell you what, the way it, uh, the, this is starting to look, it almost looks like a um, an etching. I mean, it has definitely the feel of an etching, this thing, which is cool. I mean, I love etchings. I love the way old etchings look. So for me, this is, this is cool, man. I'll take that. What do other people like? I mean, are other people down with that? Do other people like etching? Do you even know what an etching is? Do I need to explain it? Uh, etching is done with a metal plate. And what you do is you do your art by scratching into a metal plate. You can scratch, you can do acid onto it to burn images into it. You can do all sorts of stuff. But at the end, what you do is you just run it through a press and you print it, you know. That's the way they used to get images into old newspapers and stuff, you know. They would, they'd draw onto plates like, oh, this is what happened down at what or what place. And, uh, and then bam, you know. So, that's an etching. It's usually on uh, copper. It can be any metal, but copper is... Uh, Copper is, uh, is soft, and it's easy to work with. I've done quite a few of them. I haven't done anything in a long time, but I did a lot of them in school. It's, it's time consuming, it's expensive, but the results are just fantastic. It looks, it looks great. I always enjoy doing them. I actually thought it'd be cool to do a, a whole comic book as etchings. You know, just do the plates and then print it myself and it'd be a handmade book. That'd be cool to do like a floppy like that. I wonder if people would be interested in that, you know, like run them off and stuff, you know, in the printing press. I think it'd be pretty cool, but I don't know. Are people really into the uh, artsy type stuff like that? I don't know, you know, I really don't know. I 
I don't know if uh, people want to get that artsy with their comics. It'd be expensive, though. Uh, that's for tank certain. But I think it'd be cool. It'd definitely be cool. I'm doing here is I'm kind of, you know, when you're thin and got, you tend to have a lot of veins kind of coming out, so that's kind of what I'm doing right here. And I'm uh, putting some veins in them. This thing's turning out great, and I think I need to start working on these crows over here. Funny thing about uh, the movie is they actually didn't use crows for the crow. They used ravens because uh, they just look cooler, you know. So there you go. The crow didn't have crows. It had ravens because they look cooler. Now let's get over here on these crows, shall we? I mean, I've almost made this so that it's very painterly. It's not very inky, but hey, whatever. I like it. Crows kind of have these, or ravens and crows kind of have these digits on them that are kind of gnarly with the talons. Yes. Crows have tal talons. <laughs> oh, that movie. That movie was hilarious. Napoleon Dynamite. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. That's one for the ages. That was an awesome movie when it came out. There's a few movies that came out like that at that time. There was, uh, what's the other one? Was it Rod Rat, Rat, Rad Rod or something like that? What was that one? That one was kind of weird. I enjoyed it. <laughs> and then uh, Nacho Libre. That one was good. And ridiculous, but they're, they're funny. But there's a bunch of those kind of funny, like, movies back then at that time. They all kind of were like lost, vapid individuals. Or they were just into their thing, you know. Maybe that was it. Tell you what, the more I use the brush, the more I love it. Even though I already, that's my tool of choice. But, man, they're just awesome. Love, love, love using the brush. I've tried the, I think I said this before, but I've tried the quills. You know, like the crow quills. And I just can't do them, to tell you the truth. I always like push them down too hard or they get stuck in the paper and I end up just making a mess. They'll shoot out and splatter everywhere. It might be good actually now. Maybe I need to kind of try it again, see where I'm at with it. But yeah, I used to. Oh, I've tried and I, I just, I've tried and died in the quarter dune. <laughs> I didn't try and fail, I tried and died. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm doing this type of stuff right here. This is perfect for for a brush. This is exactly what you need to make this bird really pop. The brush is awesome. Get that movement down in there, them feathers. Nice. I kind of want these birds to be super dark, you know. But they really stand out as just like balls. <laughs> Is there Halloween where everyone's at? Is there gonna be Halloween this year? I know we got it where, where we live. They're definitely doing Halloween here. But are y'all gonna have it where you're at? That's a shame if you don't. Of course, where we live, there's no trick-or-treaters though. <laughs> There's Halloween here in these parts, but not where we live. They won't come to the house because we're too far in the country. There's just nothing going on out here. But in closer to town, and also in the churches, the churches have the the uh, the trunk or treat. You know, they open up the back of your trunks, and everyone comes by through the church parking lot. And you can you know, get your goodies and stuff. So there's still that in the area. Uh, they'll be having it. I've seen a few signs already out. We got some corn mazes in the area. I've actually never done a corn maze. It's always around. Maybe, uh, maybe we need to go try and do one. What do you think, Blackstar? Do we need to do a corn maze? That'd be fun. At least I think it'd be fun. It'd be cool. What have we got here? Children of the corn? No, thank you. Okay. Well, they're fun. We can do a corn maze. <laughs> uh, I like corn mazes. I, I think it'd be fun. I've never done one, but I think it'd be cool. I don't think it'd be. Well, the, uh, I don't know. You won't do the corn maze, but you'll go buy pumpkins from them. Right, baby? Right, Blackstar? <laughs> we'll be buying pumpkins here. We need to get some pumpkins. That's what we need. We haven't got any pumpkins yet. Why haven't we gotten any pumpkins yet? Go on a day date tomorrow and uh, maybe we need to get some pumpkins. Yeah, we usually put pumpkins out in front of the house. They look really cool. And then uh, since we have goats, we can uh, feed the pumpkins to the goats once Halloween's done. Where if they love them, they'll eat them right up. Yeah, I want these crow, uh, crows, uh, yeah, I want them to be really dark, where it's basically just 
silhouette someone but I want to kind of work some texture into them at the same time so I can't just go straight black with them or that would look bad so use your black sparingly that's what I'm doing just using it sparingly There's someone out there going, what are you talking about? You're using it sparingly. It's all over the dang place. It's a mess. Yeah, I know it's a mess. That's the way I like to do it. Funny, when I draw these crows, almost, it's like it's a black seagull or something because the beaks really remind me of seagulls. I grew up around a lot of seagulls. I remember there were some kids that, uh, I knew growing up they uh they they would give seagulls uh alka seltzer and make them blow up in their stomach and it's terrible. Kids do bad things. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> I don't know if uh I think I was telling this story to my wife a while back, she was like, That doesn't happen. I was like, well, I saw it happen, but I don't know, maybe it doesn't affect all birds the same, you know. But I've seen it, you know, where they fly up, you know, they come up, they eat the Alka-Seltzer, they fly off, and then they fly down, and they don't get back up, so. But that's a shame. Kids do all sorts of bad things. When they're young, that's just the way it is. What we got here? All right, doing pretty good here. Got a few more leaves to put in, or feathers to put in. Uh, it's just like feathers coming down everywhere. <laughs> so these birds are attacking them. Why are they attacking them? I don't know. That's just, I wanted it to be a little different. Instead of it sitting on his shoulder like a parrot or something, I didn't want him to be a pirate. <laughs> Whenever I saw him, you know, the crow sitting on his shoulder in the movie, I was like, man, that, that dude's like a pirate. <laughs> wasn't interested in that that look that that style let me uh, do some dry brushing on this thing now fill in some more of this there we go that's what I want to do <clears throat> let me uh, get a little more ink on that brush kind of chaotic these these uh, birds anyway you know, so they're got stuff going all over the place here I'm gonna go back and do some white highlights here and there on them but for the most part I just want them just dark because I'm not planning on coloring this so I don't really need to leave any space open for that sort of thing. There we go. That's looking good. Just 
uh, be patient with it. Let it build up. Mm-hmm. Looking good. How long have we been live? Has it been an hour and a half? Time flies when you're having fun. Good thing is I haven't had to use the bathroom. That always sucks when you're doing a live show and then you gotta use the bathroom. Ugh. That's happened to me a few times. Let me get a little more ink on this thing. Had this ink sitting out for a few days now, just getting a little dry, so it has a certain consistency to it. That's one thing I do miss about living out west. You could leave some ink out, and usually within a day it was exactly where you needed it, but because we live in the south where it's so humid on the east, you know, out here in the east, it takes a while. It takes a few days for it to, maybe a week, for it to dry up. I remember uh, I was listening to Archie Bear. He was saying that, uh, you know, they're looking at this place in Texas, and he was like, he, he didn't want to go east east, you know, to deep south east because uh, it's, it's too humid and, and he wouldn't be able to do inking the way he normally does because, you know, the humidity and everything, so. That was a real problem for him. But it's good to hear that he's going to be moving back east, though. Like, to the east. I, I think he's originally from California, though. That's, like, his his place. But it'd be cool to see him come this way. That'd be neat. But we like the Archie Bear. You're a good one. Had us on the show enough, and we really appreciate it. All the love he's given us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there we go. Rawr. Yeah, so this thing is coming along great and I think we're, you know, I'm gonna try and hit some spots. So get some dark spots here and there, you know, really make it pop, as they say. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna have to do the rest after the show because I want to get them, you know, put the whites in here. So I'm gonna sit here and really make a. I need even a better pen than this one. Let me get another brush over here. Let me try this one. That's the dry one. All right. Let me grab this brush. This brush will have tons of ink in it. Yeah. Might be even too much. But let's just see what we can get here. I just want to make a few places really pop. things sideways here. Mm -hmm. Want to get some deep stuff riding in certain areas, you know. Let me do it on this hand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
뭐예요? 아, I think we've done a pretty good job on this one. 
So what do y'all think of that? How's that? That's a pretty good one for today, man. We've been going for an hour and 45 minutes. That's crazy. Crazy time. All right. Woo. Let me get the skit tone back on. Woo. Right there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was a crow, man. I'm going to do a lot more work to it. I want to do uh, some more whites and uh, some shadowing stuff maybe from the body. Uh, maybe do a little more painting into it. Make it a little more painterly. Uh, we'll see what we get into with it. But again, I got to spray it before I can do any of that so I can fix it. You know, I got to fix all that ink on there so it doesn't uh, move around or anything. And uh, then we'll, I'll share it out on social media. You know, and just so you know, uh, if you haven't been on social media, here was the last one. This was uh, Headless Horseman from Scooby Doo. It was the last one I did. And then um, there was the uh, the Phantom Shadows from Scooby Doo. Pretty cool. So we'll get back into some Scooby Doo uh, characters next time. That'll be really cool. But let me uh, just say hello to some of the people in the chat. Spawners, hey man, thanks a lot for coming out. Really do appreciate you for being here, uh, Colin Swinburne. I think I'm saying that right, Swinburne. Looked like the opening to a cartoon. <laughs> Might have been a little more context there. I hadn't seen, but William C., Ryan Wynn. Thanks a lot for the texture, texture, texture. I know, William. It looks awesome, doesn't it? Uh, let, me, uh, let me just kind of do this here. Legit, legit, legit. Tree Goblin. <laughs> hey, dog. Ryan Wynn looking so rad. Legit horse. Well, I appreciate that, William C. Yeah, a, I, I went, you know, did the research so I could do the, the horse right, you know. I uh, appreciate all y'all for being here, man. It's been great. Uh, I can't believe that there's still 10 people here actually watching the film and watching me do this drawing and stuff. It's awesome. I mean, I never thought I'd have something like that. Here's another thing I uh, might be doing here soon. I have this uh, commission I got to do, this painting. It's a big painting. It's like five foot by six foot. I might actually uh, be doing some live streaming of that at some point too. So just uh, keep a lookout for that in the future. Just subscribe and hit that bell and like button. You got my support. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I really do appreciate that. And remember, everybody, Thursday, Jason Sean Alexander is going to be here. Uh, it's going to be an awesome show. We're going to talk, uh, you know, all types of stuff, but horror, 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 uh, horror movies, comics, whatever. You know, it's going to be great. William C., what's up, guys? Looking good. Check out the Renezi Architecture etchings. I know those are fantastic. I loved those when I was in high school, man. That was like some of the best stuff, man. I'm right there with you. It was fantastic. Got a bolt. I'm on with Jimmy Reeves in an hour. Another fantastic episode. Thank you, Michael Blackstar. Hey, we'll see you Monday, Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, everybody. That's when uh, Ryan Wynn will be here. So that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, again, man, I got to tell you, man, I'm like, I got this. My, look at my finger. <laughs> it's all nasty, man. That's from inking. That's what happens when you ink. What time? Jason Sean Alexander will be Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ryan Wynn's going to be here 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. So there you go. Yeah, uh, if you're talking about Jason Sean Alexander, that's 4 p.m. on Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. That's right. So cool, 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 cool. It's going to be awesome. Tree Goblin, Ryan Wynn, Mandible Smasher. Hey, man. We love you, Mandible Smasher. Thanks a lot for being here. It's always awesome. It's always cool that you're here. Yeah, it's just great to have that type of support. Uh, let me delete some of this stuff here. Kick, kick, kick you. Uh, let's go ahead. Actually, you know what? Something funny is I actually haven't. Um, oh, no, that ain't it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Go check out the uh, campaign, shall we? 
Right. It's, well, let me share it first, I guess. How about that? We'll share. Roast beef tonight, dinner time. Okay. Sounds good. I need some of that. Roast beef. Oh, do, do, do. so yeah, Skits the Sun book one. I mean, it's still, you know, we're at 17,880. Love to see that get over 18,000. We'd like to see it get to 20,000. 20,000 is when we do our next uh, stretch goal. Next stretch goal is going to be the Thaumatrope. You know, the little Thaumatrope, you can see it on the campaign page. It's awesome. It's a little device from the 1800s. It's like an optical illusion that uh, allows you to, you know, it's almost like a picture or something like that that moves. It's, it's just really cool stuff. Let my spawn group know about Thursday. Hey, thanks a lot, spawners. We appreciate that. We really do appreciate that. That's a that's a huge help for us. Uh, thanks for sharing that out. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, break group to support. Yeah, thanks a lot, Burst Film. Pop that up here. Group support. Yeah, spawners will let the spawn group know on Thursday. Appreciate that, man. I had Oz in life and the next. <laughs> okay, tree goblin, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it for today. I got to go do some stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this video out. Um, it'll skit the sun book one. Go back it if you haven't yet. Remember, we got three books, three covers, three variant stories, one insane adventure. So it's all... You can get that three book journey. It's wrapped and signed and numbered. It's fantastic. Go check it out. And uh, we're going to play this thing out. Hopefully it'll play. Though. I forgot to preload it.